He should be good. Woo, woo. Oh, the thing is all messed up. That's all good, though. Welcome, y'all. I'm hoping we don't have no problems this time. <laughs> or hoping we don't have no problems this time. Um, thank you for those who are watching the replay for joining us. Today we're talking about how to create an exit plan from your nine to five. And I am interviewing actually um, Drea. She's brown girl from Boston, a blogger I met a few years ago. Um, well, she still blogs, but now she's a full-time entrepreneur and she is, um, she has this new project that she is partnered with another young lady called the Careerist Project. And um, we're going to, we're going to, sorry, I'm trying to make sure I look out for her. We're going to, hey girl, be interviewing her so that she can give us, there she is. I did my intro girl. Yeah. So she's joining right on time. See? Oh, no. There you go. Let me take my thing off. <laughs> there she is. Hey, hey everyone. Hey, Marquita. Hey, girl. <laughs> Listen, I was just giving, like, your little intro of, like, when we met. <laughs> I know. It's I don't know if you remember. Time. We met, like, 2015. Gosh. Yeah. It was, it was a while ago because here's the thing. I know you, I met you before... 2016 which is when I brought my house yes and you were celebrating with me and my other friends on me purchasing that house and for those of you who don't understand what I'm talking about go see the last video where I talked about all of that, <laughs> that experience with that house thank god I'm free <laughs> I'm free but you got a new house so that's good <laughs> Yes, yes, exactly. You know, we were celebrating, and then, yeah, because yes. we met at the first Bloggers Week, and huh. I, I remember the picture. Yes, blog, I can't remember what the t uh, the conference was. It was something with bloggers, because yeah. me and Shakita were there. Um, I feel like someone else was there, but I feel like all the bloggers were there, and we all kind of, like, met and had actually in Chinatown, which is where, you know, I, I that's my, my new home for temporarily. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so it's so funny that we were in this area um, when we met. But yes, you're now, I was just saying in the intro that you are now a full-time entrepreneur and you're also, uh, you've launched this new project or this new venture with someone else called the Careerist Project. Correct. Yep. Help people who have the nine to five trying to figure it out, right? Yes. Yes. Trying to figure it out and also trying to figure out the rest of their lives. So that's also important too. Listen. So I want you to start off, unless you want to kind of like give an elevated elevator pitch, but I want you to go into your experience and your journey from being the blogger, mm -hmm. um, but also working in social work. That is your background. Yes, that's my background. So I've been a social worker 14 years. Oh my God, I can't believe like 14 years. I have Ooh. a master's and master's in social work. Um, graduated from Tuskegee University in 2006. Went ahead and got my master's in social work 2009. Um, and decided, you know, I'm going to, you know, be this dope social worker. And I ended up moving to Chicago. Then I moved back on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. and I was doing clinical therapy. And I was like, yo, this is not it. <laughs> like, clinical therapy is not it. Because you're dealing with so many people's energies. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with so much trauma. And then you have to realize your own trauma that you have to heal or, or actually, you know, face on sure. a basis. Did you have to go to therapy while you're actually helping others, like, just to make sure you're good? <laughs> I had to go to therapy a few times because oh I feel like the therapists need a therapist. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you talk to your homegirls and your parents, and they don't get it. A lot mm -hmm. of times you just have to lay your burdens down to someone who don't know you. So, you know, someone who is unbiased. So yeah. you know, like, I made sure that I had that component of my life straight. Mm -hmm. Um, so I had actually, um, it was 2000, I think before I met you, like 2014, I mm -hmm. kind of had like a breakdown, like, not Wait, a really? oh my God. Yeah. I had like a holistic breakdown. Like I was broke down spiritually, mentally, Girl. I was just turning 30 and you so together when I met you. That's why I'm just like, <laughs> always had that like chill, calm, 
you know, I'm all trying to be peaceful vibes. So I'm shocked to hear that. Yeah, so that's what happened. And, and usually I am. That's my demeanor. I'm very chill. I'm very copacetic. I'm very calm. But yeah. I had a breakdown because, you know, I was newly married, um, mm -hmm. turning 30. I reached the pinnacle of my career. Like, I want to be a director of a nonprofit. I was. I had a horrible, terrible boss, in which we'll talk about later on, yeah. dealing with racism on a job, discrimination. So I was getting migraines for two weeks straight. Wow. And the pinnacle, the pivotal part of my life, uh, when I had to go and get um, a needle inserted pretty much into my back to like calm down the migraines because oh my I God. so much stress. Oh my goodness, girl. And um, when I, and I remember getting a phone call and she was mm -hmm. like, you don't seem like you were sick earlier today. This is my former boss. So that was the, the icing of the cake. And so when I came back to work, I started pulling stuff off my wall. And oh, you were ready. You were like, yeah, this ain't. <laughs> I was, I was ready. And so when I started pulling stuff off my wall, and um, I know the administrator says, like, what you doing? I was like, I'm quitting today. She's like, today? I said, yes, today. And she's like, well, what about the agency? I was like, I can give an F of what happened after this because my life is at risk. So when I said that I had this meltdown and that my life was pretty much at risk, like this is do or die time, um, mm -hmm. I had to quit. And I was like, I don't care how much money you throw at me if my yes. health is wealth. That's yes. my model. Health is wealth and that's holistic health. And so once that started getting compromised, I was like, I gotta be out, you know, um, and then have to call your parents and then being married. I'm like, somebody's gonna have to support me on this journey. Um, and I think a lot of times we get embarrassed, like, oh, I got yes. it together, I have this degrees. But yes. when your health is being compromised, that doesn't matter when you sit in the bed and you can't get up every morning. And that was my life. I couldn't get up some mornings because I was in that much excruciating pain. Um, and I had to heal that. So once again, you know, when I started therapy again. So that was the journey of being a social worker um, and the journey to entrepreneurship because I was on a call with Valerie Burton. And I said, yo, I'm a social worker. And she was talking about life coaching. And I said, mm -hmm. I can do the same thing. So that's when I started blogging about my experience with dealing with racism on the job okay and here's the thing you when you left boston you were like peace i remember <laughs> being and i was like dang is it really that bad and you were just like y'all think it's like progressive <laughs> in boston mm -mm. you're much more peaceful from what it seems like much more peaceful yeah. than working for yourself and being in the south back home um in your new home with your husband like y'all are like really building new roots in a new place right but you, you just seem way more happier so but i want to go back to toxic environments like mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of people were dealing with the toxic environment but number one we don't want to talk about it because we want to be grateful that we have a job right now due to the pandemic but help people identify what that looks like like what are the red flags or signs that you're in a bad place Definitely. Um, I will always say when your supervisor is riding you out the door, they don't have to be white, they can be black, they can be, you know, whatever. When they're riding you out the door and when they're taking things personally. So, you know, when your work is not on point for them and you know that you like a super duper dope worker, you know, your work ethics on point, you dot every I across every T and they're like, hold on, you didn't dot that third I. Like, what's the yeah. problem with that? That's definitely a toxic work environment. Um, when you're getting yelled at, humiliated, or just even, you know, having that, you know, manifesting into physical symptoms, that's mm -hmm. a toxic work environment. When you're taking your work home, because that's another thing too, a lot of us take our work home and we're like, oh, I'm like, they can't exist without me. No, that job's going to exist with or without you there. Sure. And I think that's a lot of times that's a toxic environment because we don't set the professional boundaries as well. Um, mm -hmm. Also too, when you find yourself working on the weekends and mm -hmm. you know like no one's not like stopping you and they're like yeah you go ahead girl you're working on the weekend <laughs> giving up vacation time and you're mm -hmm. like i'm not taking vacation because they need me toxic work environment and my other one i would definitely say when they are you're being excluded from the meetings because they have to out the meeting you know what i'm saying <laughs> right there because they just oh i'm sorry i didn't didn't realize you didn't realize, really? Yes. That okay. So I want you, I want you to hold on. There's so much you said. I want to really, I want to reference number one about your video that you have on your. She has great videos on her own. Uh, I don't want to call it a channel, but profile or whatever. And I honestly loved it. There was one that was, "Are you sick of? 
are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? And you talk about toxic work environments. And I want you to help people. How do you set the boundaries though? Like when you need a job, <laughs> How do you set the work? How do you set the boundaries and still keep your job? Good point. So this is why you have to interview your potential employer, right? A lot okay. of times when they say, do you have any questions? A lot of people are like, no, I'm good. No, you need to be drilling them with questions. What is your work style? What is the work environment? What is the over, you know, what they call it, the overtime rate? Like how many people are like keeping out of here within like six months? Yeah, yeah. The um, turnaround, yeah, or whatever, turnover. <laughs> yeah, turnover rate, exactly. So you need to ask those. Then let's say you get into the job. Then you know what's your boundaries. I always say get this, pen and pad. Okay, write down what's your non-negotiables. If yeah. you know you want to take vacation time, let's say in July, then you need to be requesting that from the get-go. You yeah. know that you don't want to work on the weekends, you need to be requesting that from the get-go. I do not want to work on the weekends because I have a family or I just need the self-care. Um, so those things should be already on the table before you set the offer. Because they, they're going to say so many dope things. Like, oh, yeah. Of course. Oh, yeah. But you need to have those. They always do that. <laughs> right. They always do that. Do you have to be tied down to a company phone? Mm. Um, are you going to be? Big, that's a big one that I tried to avoid for the longest time because that's a sneaky one. Yeah. They're like, oh, you can get this new phone. And you're like, oh, okay, great, because I don't want you to have my personal whatever. But that also means since they're paying for that phone, you got to be on call and you got to answer when they call and text. And it's, it's ooh, that's when the lines cross and get yeah, better. Exactly. And don't get, like, swayed by, like, the shiny object. Like, oh, this is a new phone. This is a new iPhone. No, because yeah. you're going to be locked down to that phone. And I also tell people to create your own boundaries and put them on the table. Before yeah. you even, like I said, sign that offer letter because you're going to be locked into somewhere that you're going to be miserable and even seek out your coworkers and ask them questions, you know, go on LinkedIn and be like, Hey, can we have a virtual chat? Can you talk mm. about the work environment? Because of course, you know, the person, the HR is going to be, Oh, this is a lovely place, but you need to talk to people who've actually got on the grind who works yeah. there on a daily basis. And that's not going to be biased. That's going to be like, girl, let me tell you, <laughs> got me crazy. Well, they drove old girl crazy up out of here. So make sure that you are being vocal because, yeah, all money's not good money. All salary is not good salary. And you Very true. check your piece. Listen, I um, it's so funny that you mentioned that because that happened to me. Actually, it was in my current job, but I was a contractor. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was interviewing. And one of the employees was just like, look, I'm just, it was their time to interview me. But they were just like, look, this is what it really is. And they didn't care because they were also a contractor. So right. they were just like, I'm ready to go anyway. But I'm going to tell you what they're telling you and what it is. And I was appreciative of that. But I was like, maybe he's exaggerating. He was not. Mm -hmm. he was telling the truth. And to your point, the money was good. Right. But I don't know. I, it's hard for me to really say that it was worth it. Right. Because um, now, like, being in it after a year, I'm like, good Lord, how can I get out of this? Because... <laughs> So uh, to your point, and I know, like I said, it's a pandemic. So sometimes people are like, I just want to get in. But if you're going to get in, make sure you have a plan to get out. Yeah. Like, make sure you have that strategy to get out. Exactly. Now, similar to the boundaries, I want to talk about the microaggressions because a lot of Black people specifically, uh, but to be honest, even other people of color, I hate to say it, just that everybody who's of color experience it in different ways. Now, of course, we're both Black, so we know what it is. Yeah, but how again because we all need a job how do you get around that how do you handle that and make sure people understand that it is not okay to say certain things in uh, mm -hmm. ways yeah definitely um you know have that conversation privately with your co-worker who is having this microaggression like for instance um i'm natural you know yeah i wear my different protective styles but i remember being at my old job and they're like you always come in here with different styles and i'm like yeah. You gonna see all type of different styles. Is, mm. is my work a pro is my hair affecting my work? See, when you get them like that, they're like, oh. But you're stopping in their tracks, <laughs> like right there front and center. Yes. And you have to be <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to ask. Like, did it come up to HR that you were being mean or uh too aggressive with them later on after it was, saying it was actually my former boss wife. Wow. 
And then I reminded her, I said, well, then you, aren't you the one that told me that you have adoptive black grandchildren? And I had to kindly remind her. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, well, can you give me some tips on how to do that hair? <laughs> this like what it's times like that where you're just like what games are you playing here like why are you why are you playing this game here like it's almost like i want to say this thing that's really disrespectful but i'm like oh but okay i'm good but could you give me advice on this now wait a minute no i don't forget the thing that you just said <laughs> exactly and also too for everyone that's listening all the microaggressions i know this is hiring make sure that you have a notepad and a pen and mm -hmm. write down every type of, you know, interaction. Because they will they will go to HR and be like, well, she's being aggressive. Then you can pull out that notebook and that, you know, your receipts. And be like, on this day, you have said X, Y, and Z. On this day, you have said X, Y, and Z. But keep it at home. Because, you know, people can fumble through your stuff in the office. But, you know, keep it at home. Always, ha always be assertive. And no smiling. Because, you know, if you do the smiling, they're going to be like, oh, she's joking. No, I'm not joking. Because... I got to deal with this outside of work. I got to deal with this on the job. I come here to do what I'm supposed to do. I don't have to like any of y'all. I live here to do what I have to do. And that, I was taught that from my parents. Like my mom's like, you don't got to go and like nobody. Your job is to go to work and do what you need to do. Same. My parents said the same thing. They're both, yeah, I think our parents are both boomers. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> child, I think the, the tricky thing about that is, um, tricky in corporate America. Yes. You know what I mean? And I work for a nonprofit, but it's still very much corporate like. Mm -hmm. And the nature of the game to stay as long as you can as I'm sorry to say it, as a black person, you do have to play that game of like being nice but still keep them straight. Does yes. that make that makes a lot of sense. Nice nasty on yes. Right. <laughs> And it's hard sometimes, especially, you know, being a woman, I'm speaking for myself, not as a general statement, but as me as a woman, I sometimes get in my feelings when I'm like, yo, you, why are you doing this? Why are you saying this? Um, and it's more so prominent when you're the only black person. Yeah. On and uh, I think it's a balance. I, I would, I would highly suggest, you know, tuck away those emotions and go. <laughs> That's true. You got like, to do that saddle, yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying suppress it because that's the reason why I pay a therapist to talk it out. But I am saying don't re react so emotionally because they will hold that against you. Right. And that's that it sucks. Yeah. This is a great segue. How do you create an exit plan? <laughs> that's a good point. So also know what you want for your next job. Let's say you're going to exit to a next job. What's the things you did not like about your job that you're in now, right? So write that down. I'm a firm believer in writing everything now, or just even if you got to create a video, blog, I don't care what you do. Just make sure you have a log of what you do not want. Mm -hmm. Make a list of what the things that you do want. What type of money are, you know, to, that's going to be your livelihood? Because a lot of times, some of us, we live above our means. Yeah. You to tailor that down. You know, yeah. with the pandemic, like, you shouldn't be yeah. out here getting it in. Because you know, yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, what, what's your livelihood look like? Also, too, do you need health care? Do you need a, a 401k? Um, and keep that plan within. Don't go tell everybody in their mama what your plan is. Please. Um, because people will sabotage it. People will yes. just leaving. So please do not ever say, this is my transitional plan. With a transitional plan, too, you have to make sure that you have a smooth and easy transition out. Do not leave a position and you don't have a job or have some type of hustle going on in which that's going to supplement your income. Because I'm not a firm believer like, y'all should quit y'all job and go start a business. It takes a long time to profit from a business. And also, too, if you got to go be a contractor, a consultant, cool, yes. but know what the measures are. Be a, 10, be a 1099. You yes. know, do something like that, but don't just quit your job and, you know, you got a mortgage, rent, and you don't have a support system. A lot of people don't have a support system. Or if they do, their parents are like, child, ain't nobody told you to quit that job. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm, I always say, well, I can always go back, back home to Florida. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> They're going to be looking at me and looking at the time like, okay, when this going to be over with? <laughs> exactly. You know, because some people don't have that luxury. Like when I moved, you know, to Alabama, 
what we did, you know, we had consultant with my um, parents, like my mom and stepdad, and we lived upstairs. Now, if we had to live, like, in the next room from them, I don't think that would happen. Like, I would have to go get 10 jobs. So, you know, like, um, we had upstairs, you know, they had redid upstairs. And so my husband and I was able to move upstairs, stack our money, you know, and figure out what we want to do with our lives. But everyone don't have that luxury or the patience to deal with, you know, the Woo! So, you know, make sure you have a tight transition plan and yeah. which is not going to be sabotaged. Um, go on interviewing, go on motivational interviews, um, you know, mm -hmm. interview jobs. It don't have to say that you're going to, like, apply for it, but be like, okay, let me see what their work coach is. So it's kind of like being an intern, like doing a job shadow. That's oh. always good, too, because a lot of times we just thought, this seems like a cool place to work at, and then you, like, do, like, a little internship. You're like, I did not, I do not want to sign up for this. So, you know, have that transitional plan. Also, to self-care. That's so important. Add that to your transitional plan because self-care is very important because when you leave a job, you probably have dealt with so much trauma, yeah. You have dealt with bullying, toxic environment. So you need that time, you know, to really truly heal and like also take that vacation time. So if you're transitioning, let's say tomorrow and you got, I'm going to say 180 hours in vacation time, take all that time. And yeah. why you have 180 hours? You should have been taking vacation now. Seriously. <laughs> during out, throughout your time, your tenure at that job. And yeah. do you want to work for a nonprofit, a for profit? Um, you know, like also to start with your side hustle. What is your side hustle that maybe, yeah, I can, like, do natural products on the side and then sell that? So always have a plan. Just don't be like, I'm out. And then you're like, oh, yo, I don't have any savings. Have Listen, savings. People are resonating with that trauma. And I, I feel like, uh, why are you nursing your brain? Yes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And especially, then look, I'm telling y'all now, as a person who has actually done this, Take your vacation time during this pandemic. Please stop just letting that, those hours sit. I take my time and I'm like, I need to take this day off or I need to take a week yeah. off if I got it. Because it's just going to sit there. It, <laughs> it is. And you, it's like, I think, um, I think like 60% of Americans do not take vacation time. What's wrong with y'all? Y'all better take that vacation time. It's they scared. It's almost, it's like they scared and they're just like, well, they need us or they need me. Yeah. You know okay. Because I know people have died on jobs. <laughs> <laughs> For, first of all, those people with the 100 hours need to be donating that to people yes. who are with cancer um, or perhaps pregnant, you know. Right. Uh, right. Being loyal, who, here's the thing loyal and they will let you go. They will go to play. What they said, these jobs ain't loyal. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Now, I'm glad that you're mentioning about the self-care and some of the people, they, they definitely recognize, like, trauma. Mm -hmm. when, when do you come to that point when it's like, okay, I don't know if 9 to 5 is for me. Mm -hmm. I think that's where I am in my, to be honest, I know it's like, is this selfish? Somebody else could be, you know, one of the creators might be thinking this. When do you come, when have you come to that realization? Like, you know what? I've, I've climbed the ladder, mm -hmm. made the money. I don't think that this structure is for me. Number one, here's two-parter. Mm -hmm. When do you come to that realization? Like nine to five structure isn't for me because I, whatever, political games, whatever. Right. And what does it look like to transition um, as a full-time entrepreneur? Um, what does it look like to like transition that site when to start the side hustle and transition it to your full time um, thing? Definitely. Um, when you know nine to five is not for you, when Sunday rolls around and you crying, like you are literally Ooh, and you at, at that bed and you crying, and also when your health is being compromised because nine Ooh. to five is not for all of us. Um, some people, you know, do well with being, you know, an entrepreneur, yeah. but who's going to help you fund that? And also, do you have, what is going to make you the most money? Because a lot of us, we have side hustles, but yeah. what's the one that's going to make you the most money? And like I said, so you can easily transition into that, especially if you're a creator, whatever the case is. Yeah. Also, too, like I said, take a, a holistic look at your life. Mm. Do you have things in plan in which you can transition for like six months? Or do you need to go and say, hey, I'm going to be a creative, let's say nine to five. And then from five to 10, I can do like remote work or do mm -hmm. consultant work. Cause there's nothing wrong with doing those things too. You know, That's if you need to have that money 
to mm-hmm. like to fund your dreams and i think a lot of times people just quit but you need to have that money to fund your dreams especially if you're an artist um mm-hmm. or whatever the case is but find something that you like remote work i love remote work because you can work from home and still have time to be like, oh, I can work on my business during this time because you don't have no one, what they call it, being the helicopter boss. <laughs> you know, like they're looking at you like, what are you doing? So maybe yeah. you need to look at remote work, which yeah. is fabulous because, like I said, you don't have no one that's you're reporting to. You probably have a boss, but you're not on Zoom 24-7 because we're in a pandemic. Yeah. Um, but just make sure that you have something that's going to fund your entrepreneurship, um, you know, pathway and not just quit your job. Any oh, that's a good question. He says, uh, any suggestions for side hustles during the pandemic? That was actually one of my questions I was going to ask. Like, do you have any ideas that you can share of, like, what a person can start for a side hustle? Um, I would definitely say, you know, you could use your phone. If you like taking pictures, people are always looking for stock photos. Like, mm-hmm. if you are like, oh, I love taking pictures, take pictures and stock photos. And, you know, Google, like, okay, who can pay me for a stock photos? Um, making natural products. A lot of people are looking, like, oh, I'm, I'm seeing people be like, who can make sea moss? Who can make natural products? Because people are What is sea moss? I keep on my time on sea moss. Like, why is that such a big deal right now? Because it has 92 minerals that, you know how you take all these um, supplements? Yeah. It has 92 minerals in one of the drinks. And yeah. you know, it's really, it really helps like to cleanse you out. That is actually for the person who's asked, you might want to get into that because that apparently, cause I have a friend who she's an artist and she, she, you know, she's into some other things, but that is one of her income streams yep. selling moss on the internet. Yeah. She ain't got no humongous following, but that is one of her income streams. And I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a big thing because you know, with immune system and things of that nature, yeah. I'm going to tell y'all another secret thing because I garden too. If you can like um, be a gardener and sell like your veggies or even plants, and mm. I can tell y'all some plants that's in demand, if you can do that, you will make mad money. Because like in my gardening groups, people are like, I bought this plant for $300. I'm like, $300? $300? Yes. $300. And gardening is a big thing right now. It's a big thing. Thing. like anything yes exactly health and wellness is huge so if you're a personal trainer if you are a yoga instructor even if you know how to like okay everybody we're gonna do meditation people will pay big dollars just to meditate because you know why because people are on the edge mental health is on the rise we're gonna have a mental health pandemic and i hate to say that but it's, i'm a realist if you are into like health and wealth and i'm talking about holistic health if you are like a, a therapist or like a life coach this is your time to shine because people are looking for that. There, I am. Woo, and don't die afraid. Um, she's actually going to be one of the people that I talked to. She's in the mental health. Like, that's her. Her blog is about that. Uh-huh. And, um, listen. <laughs> I, have been, I have been grabbing at all the resources. <laughs> is that- because it's a lot. It's a lot. Especially if you have loved ones. Um, I lost someone, a loved one. And I couldn't go to the funeral. Because... Right. Um, they didn't want anybody who had to travel by plane. Mm-hmm. So anybody who traveled by car could attend. It's right. very ironic. Photography happens to be one of my hobbies. You need to, James, you need to, be, James. you need to polish that up because not only what she's saying, you could get on some of these sites called Creative Market and some other sites where you could sell those stock photos that you do. Um, more than one site, of course, and make passive income. Yeah. So, that's one that you you already got the skill for, sharpen it up, do whatever editing you need to do so that it's sellable and you can make some passive income right now. And then listen, bloggers need photographers. I don't know what how they're doing during this pandemic, but they need photographers to take their Instagram photos. That's right. another money making way. Exactly. And I mean you don't really have to have um what you call it, like it can be social distancing as well when you are a photographer. I know that um they have this thing called a thousand photographers. They're going around different in fifty states taking headshots of those who are unemployed. So if you can get on this and I think this nonprofit they pay the photographers, um, for James, if you can get on our list it's called a thousand or ten thousand photographers and you know, just help take people's um do a pop up um shop with that. You good. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, what was the other? I, I got so hooked on that. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so still, I want to stay on that that um, side hustle, per like on the purpose side, because there may be some people who can't figure out, like James has a hobby, and I see some other the other ladies who already have their creative outlet, but there may be some who are stuck and don't know really what their strong points or talents or even their purpose. How, how can a person get clear on that, on what their purpose is or um, something so that they can start a business for? Definitely. So I always say, what is your purpose? What is your life calling? Like, what has been gravitating you to do something? Like, are you like a really dope listener? And your friends are like, yo, you're like a dope, you know, life count, life coach. And you're like, oh, no, I don't want to do it. And you've been giving all your friends. And we know we got drama filled. Mm -hmm. That's like, child, I need <laughs> $200 an hour. You know, people will pay you for that just to, yeah. it's not dumping they just need to have some type of guidance in their life. Like being, yeah. that's why I ended up being a, a life coach and a career coach because I'm good at seeing a bigger picture and yeah. also saying, hey, you know, have you tried this? Have you tried that? People get paid to be a, a strategist. Like, how do you strategize my life? People get paid to organize folks' closets. Yes, but people like me <laughs> need that help. <laughs> right? It's the market. And when you got the money to pay, it's like, could you just do this? Because it's, it's so much of a burden to do it yourself. Listen. Yes, exactly. So for me, like one of my side hustles, like I make beard oils for me. Um, I help grow my husband's beard. Oh, so yeah. I make beard oil for men and I love it because I have all type of women. I have men be like, girl, like my husband, he needs to grow this beard because it's looking, you know, scruffy. And so like I put, I whip it together, you know, so that's one of my things I love doing. And it's therapeutic for me because I yeah. can also go into my garden and be like, all right, let me, you know, go ahead and get some herbs and whip it together and make this beard oil or, you know, shea butter. Um, because I'm into health and wellness. So, you know, whatever is your passion is that you really love um, to do and that people have been telling you that you've been doing a good job at doing, you know, gravitate towards that. Think about all the things you do at your job. Listen. If you feel like a virtual assistant, honey, you can have a whole virtual assistant, you know, office. Um, and yes. you don't realize that for 15 years, you've been taking orders or whatever the case huh? is, the boss. And you're like, I'm not good at that, but it comes easy for you. And don't try to stress yourself out trying to find that side hustle because it may not work for you. Find Definitely. something that's innate that you like, yo, I would do this for free 99. Um, yeah. But no, I can't because I have to pay the bills. Yes. And to that point of the virtual assistant, that's huge for a lot of business owners. So for those who think, oh, I'm just an executive assistant, girl, <laughs> <laughs> you could be making a lot of money on the side being somebody's virtual assistant because that is a huge need for a lot of businesses that aren't like corporate size Definitely. places. So uh, don't, you know, don't count yourself out. <laughs> right. Don't count. Okay. So we're at the 30, mm, we're over two minutes, but I did want you to just share, like, do you have any uh, resources, services that you could share with people to help them get clear and create that plan so that they ain't got to do this nine to five or just get a better nine to five, right? Definitely, definitely. So you all can check out my blog, um, www.browngirlfromboston. So I created this free um, mini business plan and all you got to do is just click on it. It's on the right hand side when you go into the um, main page and you can download it and it's just something simple like this is, you know, what I'm good at. This is where I can make money from. So you can do your own market research. Um, if you want to schedule a coaching session, we can do that too, because I have helped so many people start their businesses. Cause I'm good with the startup point. Like yes. I, know I can identify so many, I can give you like 10 businesses you can make. So you can definitely go to that, um, for the nine to five for my folks that's like, listen, I need help with nine to five. That's the, when the careerist project come in, um, myself and my homegirl Shamika Moore, we started the careerist project. So we help folks with their nine to five, um, you know, with their business development, and we mainly help black women because a lot of times we on the front lines, you know, we get paid the lowest. And so, you know, you can check that out at www.careerisproject.com. Um, we do one-on-one, -on -one. Um, you get two coaches and also, you know, we get to coach you all. Then we have also a cohort three that's coming up in the fall. So, you know, you'll be in a group coaching program with them. So I'm, I'm always trying to figure out ways to like help people elevate and become the best version of their lives because we're at a critical time in which people are like, I don't know what to do, but this is the best time if you want to get out your nine to five, unless you want to transition to one, because hate to say it, white guilt, people will be like, okay, here's a, here's an interview. I'm, I'm telling you, I have seen people interview 
like nobody tomorrow because a white guilt is in full effect. So if you want to like go to a new night, Trans transition right now. Listen, y'all better get on that. She gonna help you get a better job. You might as well. <laughs> oh, I love this. This was great. Um, yeah. listen, we may do another one because we don't know what fall gonna look like. <laughs> we don't. We really don't. I appreciate you taking the time. Listen, this was fun. I this is fun and relaxing. I love yeah. talking to people that I can just like, you know, chill and just pick your brain, if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, I appreciate it. Listen, everybody, come back next week. We got another one on Monday. I'll tell you in my posts what it is. <laughs> Stay tuned. All right, y'all. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah.